Yeah, hi there. These comments are for, um, I'm just using your initials uh, AS, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons. I'm looking at your integrated uh, writing practice test that you sent me, I think it was yesterday. I think overall you, you, you've you put together a pretty good essay. I'm going to put you, you're, you're, my guess is you're between 3.5 and 3.75 out of 5, or 22 to 24 points out of 30. If you look at the rubrics, overall you made a, a pretty good connection of ideas, I think, with the reading and the listening passage. Uh, I think here, errors of usage in our grammar may be more frequent or may result in noticeably vague expressions or obscure meaning in conveying ideas and connections. So you need to make some improvements with language use. So that's probably... Uh, at my website, you can focus a lot in the vocabulary and the grammar uh, parts of my course and that will help you with some of those language use issues. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, so the reading passage discusses the human activities harm. There's different ways to correct this. You can say discusses that the human activities harm the bat's population, or discusses, if you use this as an object, then you can change this to which harm or harming. So I know it's possible to not put that in there, but in this case, it almost looks like activities is the object of the verb discusses and then you have harm, which is the verb. So either put harming here or put the connector there and then change harming back to harm. So you could probably do this. So the reading passage discusses the human activities harming the bat's population. So this is possessive. It means population of the bats. So I'm going to say apostrophe. I'm going to try to take note of some of the issues here so we can look at them later on too. So you say first, the reading says that people destroy the environments where bats live. For example, the foraging areas and caves where bats habitat are... are attacked by humans due to land development. could probably just say this, are developed by humans. Probably not even say that. And I'm guessing, I would develop this a little bit more. You might say something like, uh, I didn't see the actual reading passage, therefore, you might say, perish since they do not have a place to live. Okay, so on the other, on the contrary, the professor points out, though this is good, this is a very important word here because it's showing how the listening is different from the information in the reading. So on the contrary, the professor points out the bats now live in other places instead of caves. She says that they now live in in artificial objects such as under how about let's make this plural so under roofs in buildings so human activities do not affect bats Okay, the next one. Second, the article states that the habitats of people and bats overlap and you might say this 
mutual encounter maybe causes a mass killing of bats. To illustrate, the passage I would say use quotes, the killings of bats, and I think here you want to change this to occurring or you can say which occur in Texas and Tennessee. Uh, so because it has active meaning, you can change that to uh, ing. So to illustrate the passage quotes the killing of bats occurring in Texas and Tennessee. The problem is you can't use who to refer to countries, I mean states, right? So we have to slightly change this sentence to make it more logical. How about by saying by residents? So I think we have it. So the passage quotes the killing of bats occurring in Texas and Tennessee by residents who were afraid of the bite of bats and the diseases rats were carrying. All right. So you say here, however, the speaker says a trend of exterminating. I'm going to change this to uh, I'm going to use flying mammals. Exterminating means killing, but exterminating is a good vocabulary word when you want to talk about getting rid of an unwanted either insect or animal. In this case, uh, animal. I also use the word flying mammal as a restatement of the word bat, right? So I'm trying to show a little bit better, more vocabulary, kind of a wider range of, of words here. Uh, you say, however, the speaker says the trend of exterminating these flying mammals will not last because people... I'm going to probably use future here. will begin to realize the true nature and... importance of bats. According to her lecture, bats usually do not bite people. Now in this case, usually when you're separating, these are separate sentences, independent clauses, so the semicolon is going to work better here than the actual comma. See, moreover, they're useful for pollination and mosquito repelling. All right, let's take a look at the last paragraph here. So it says, lastly, the reading passage mentions that the industrialization affects the food supply of bats. The change in the weather and temperature influence the food. Uh, bats can eat negatively. In this case, you don't need the comma here. You're saying that The climate and the weather and the temperature influence the food. It kind of means this, right? So even though you didn't put it in there, it kind of means that. So normally, when we're using commas, especially in this case, this is what's called that bass can eat. Uh, this is what's called an adjective clause. And this information, I think, is important to identify the word food. So we don't want to set it apart with a comma. So we have an influence the food that bats can eat negatively. You could do that like you did it at the end. See, the lecture on the other hand points out maybe you might say that weather changes favor the food supply of bats. The temperature is increasing and it means that the warm weather improves the food supply of bats, such as insects and flowers. Okay, 
So if you wanted to, if you want to have a conclusion, you don't need to. I don't think it's a, a, a major problem. You might, you might start something like... Um, See what I'm saying here? So you say to sum up, the speaker in the lecture clearly opposes the points that the author in the reading passage makes about bats. Now a couple of other things. I'm going to show you a few tricks here. So let's look at some sentence variety things we can do for a minute. Um, you don't always have to put this signal marker in the beginning, right? So let me show you a couple of things. I'm going to delete that. You might say, if you put it at the end like this, you would say it like that. On the contrary, bats now live in other places instead of caves, points out the professor. Then you might say, she says, In addition, that they now live in artificial objects such as under roofs and buildings, so human activities do not affect bats, right? And I'm going to change this up a little bit too, so I'm showing you different ways of putting the voice markers into your sentences so you're not always putting them in the beginning. So the trend of exterminating these fly ma flying mammals How about this, instead of says, how about that? The trend of exterminating these flying mammals, asserts the speaker, will not last because people will begin to realize the true nature and importance of bats. According to her lecture, bats usually do not bite people. Moreover, they are useful for pollination and mosquito repelling. And that's probably good enough right there, right? So I think it's close. I, I would, like I said before, you're probably between 22 and 24 points. I think you want to try to minimize some of the minor grammatical errors that you're having. I think that can make a difference and help you get into the four area. The one thing that probably bugged me, one of the things that bugged me the most was when you used who and you put those two states before it. You remember that? Where was that? Here. And I put the words in here to the quote, the passage quotes the killing of bats occurring in Texas and Tennessee by residents who were afraid of the bat, bite of bats and diseases bats were carrying. Okay, so based on your score and based on my specific analysis and evaluation of what you wrote, there are some specific lessons in my online TOEFL course I think you want to pay pretty close attention to in order to improve some of your language use issues. So in the grammar section, let's take a look at what we have here. I'm going to show you some things I think are going to be beneficial for you. Uh, I think uh, positives, I mean participial phrases, I think is important. Lesson number three. Uh, you remember I changed some of your words from occur to occurring or and so on. So I, I think lesson three is important. Lesson four I think is a good sentence. Uh, I think lesson number six, sentences with adjective clauses. And then 6.1, that and which and adjective clauses. I think lesson seven, noun clauses. Now also go to Google. Okay, here's your keywords. I want you to look at this. Type in the keywords, you'll find a good website. Okay, here, here it is. When do you omit that in noun clauses? Sometimes you're omitting it, but it makes kind of the sentence structure a little bit unclear. So you want to know when it's possible to omit that 
in a noun clause. That are, that's your key words there. Um, let's keep going. So what else here? Probably less than 16 count and non-count nouns. You can take a look at that. Passive verbs, less than 19, I think is good. Less than 20 articles, a and and the. Um, yeah, probably sentence variety, less than 26 would be a good one. You can take a look at that. And then punctuation, absolutely yes. So when to use commas, less than... 28, I think is a good lesson for you. Lesson 29, I want you to really pay attention to the two lessons that focus on the semicolon and the colon. That's what you want to try to clarify right now. All right, now in the writing area, there's really not a lot of recommendations I have because overall, you used what I call a very logical compare and contrast organization. So it was actually quite easy to follow how you organize your ideas. Let me just check. There might be one or two things in here that you might want to look at. Give me a quick second. Uh, I can't remember all of my lessons uh, here. Yeah, I think um, lesson number 12, quoting, paraphrasing, and summarizing during the integrated writing task. Check out that lesson. And then paraphrasing with voice markers, lesson number 12.2. Right, so this will give you some ideas on different ways that you can put the voice markers uh, into your sentences that shows that you have pretty good syntactic variety. Alrighty, and those are my comments, so thank you very much for completing this integrated writing practice test. I hope that uh, my analysis and my evaluation of your writing uh, is helping you to improve because that's exactly what my goal is. All right, and remember, if you have any other questions, you can email me and ask them and I will clarify those points for you.